Hi, and welcome to the Newcastle Speech Pathology Podcast. I'm your host, Hosanna Haddon. This fortnight's topic is developing social skills in little people through games, activity, and play. We'll have our founder and director, Alison McDonald, share her experience as a mum of three daughters and a speech pathologist of over 30 years, as well as our fellow speech pathologist, Beck, as she shares her experience of both working in this area and raising a young three-year-old at home. This episode is packed with loads of practical advice. We hope you'll join us. Well, welcome to the podcast, Beck. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. So you're one of our longest standing speech pathologists here next to Alison. Yes. And yep. you are a mum of Atticus, who is yep. how old now? He turned three last week. Three last week? Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, wow, it was very big exciting. milestone. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We've been asking him all week, how old are you now? He's still getting the hang of it. Still getting the hang <laughs> yeah. of it. Okay. He'll, yeah, he still looks at you like, mm. <laughs> by four, he'll have it down. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Then it changes again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, this um, fortnight's topic is um, teaching social skills to young kids at home through games and activities. Mm -hmm. yep. And you, as a speech pathologist, obviously had to learn all of this at university. Yes. Um, to start with, what got you interested in speech pathology? Because it could yeah. be considered a niche to some. What yeah. sort of drew you in and how did you get into it? <laughs> and certainly, I think the profession is more well known now, but when I was finishing high school more than a decade ago, um, it was quite an unknown profession. And I came from a family of teachers, all of my mums and my aunts, my brother's gone down the teaching career as well. Um, all of them had done education and I knew that I enjoyed parts of education, certainly had some gifting thanks to the family in that field as well. But mm -hmm. I had a real love of health professions. Um, and so I looked into like nursing and medicine and things like that. But I found speech pathology which is a health profession but also a teaching profession and I found it a beautiful crossover of sort of both of the things that I liked and felt like I had some skill in and yeah I've never looked back I loved it from yeah, yeah. sort of the first course I did yeah that's amazing I yeah. didn't really think about that being the crossover between teaching and sort of medical health side yeah. as well yeah yeah yeah. There you go. And so you have been a speech pathologist for how long now? Uh, this is my 10th year now. 10th year? Yes. Wow. 10th yeah. year. That's a big milestone. Mm. So with all this head knowledge you had going into um, speech therapy about teaching uh, social skills to toddlers and mm. young kids, um, and I guess practicing that in your clinic rooms and having all that knowledge. Yeah. How has it changed since becoming a mum and trying to implement that stuff in your home? Mm. I think the biggest thing that I've noticed is um, just the need that young children have, all young children need to be explicitly taught some aspects of social skills. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, the kids that come into therapy, they are here because they need some extra help in being taught the social skills. Oh. But I found I've been surprised, particularly once Atticus has reached more toddlerhood, how much of parenting is navigating those tricky social situations with him. And it's like getting alongside him in the playground and talking him through why he's feeling upset about something that's happened or why his friend is upset because his friend might have been hit or, you know, had his toy stolen, those sorts of things. And it's like talking those situations through and explaining the social situation to him. And that's so much more a part of parenting than I thought it would be. Yeah. yeah. What would, in your professional and personal opinion, what yeah. are the sort of big um, issues that little people have with social skills? What yeah. are they learning in that early stage? Yeah. Um, a lot of it for the very little ones, like our little toddlers, it's learning how to um, negotiate uh, who gets a turn at what toy. It's learning how to use our bodies carefully and to use, like, we often, I love to say gentle hands. Um, mm, yeah. So using gentle hands instead of hitting. Um, and that's big. It comes with 
it really ties in closely to emotional regulation as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to teach them how to notice their own emotions and how to cope with those emotions and then how to behave with them. And as they're learning how to recognize their own emotions, then they learn how to recognize those emotions in other people. And that's sort of the beginning of social skills because social skills is being able to make a guess at what another person is thinking and feeling and change our behavior accordingly. That's kind of the foundation of good social skills. Yeah, mm. yeah, all very important aspects. Yes. And it's something that comes naturally to some and as you said some people need a little bit more yeah. help in that area. I think it's it's important to note though that while it might come easier to some people, I don't think it's ever supernatural mm. and that a lot of it needs really explicit teaching. Um yeah. so an example would be you know, I don't think that children will naturally pick up on needing to say apologize and needing to do something to help make their friend feel better when they've wronged their friend mm. um, without somebody coming alongside them and saying, this person's feeling upset, we've upset them, we should say sorry, we should help them out. Um, I think that that needs to happen for all children, um, mm. regardless of whether it's easy or tricky for them. And yeah, some kids will need some extra help with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are a lot of, um, I guess, social constructs and things that we come up with as a society that are yes. just accepted as normal, but maybe right. don't naturally just kick in. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah. like you say, they're just a construct. So yeah. it doesn't necessarily <laughs> make sense. And we all sort of have to work at it. Um, and it's something that nobody is perfect at. Like even adults are still working out mm. how to um, get by in life without um, really offending people and even adults offend people accidentally and we have to work yes. it out and so yeah. I think it's good to let our children know as well that everybody makes these mistakes and so teaching them how to repair those mistakes is really important um, and yeah we don't want to like force our kids towards any sort of perfect behavior or compliance or anything we just want to help show them the right thing to do as much as we can yeah <laughs> yeah so what are some good ways that we can be modeling to little people what the right thing is to do? Do you have mm. any like games, activities, that sort of thing that yeah. really help model that for kids? Definitely. Um, I think a big one is just giving them opportunities to play with kids um, their own age mm. um, or even kids that are a little bit um, older or a little bit younger. So yeah, getting, you know, if you've got cousins, getting cousins around, um, if you can go to the park and meet other kids there, that's really helpful. Play groups and music groups and places where they get to see other kids interacting because our kids learn a lot by copying one another and where we can get down and play with them. And like I say, you've really got to model it yourself. Like you give the words that they would say as mm. well. And I do this, my son is quite a shy, boy at least initially once you've been with him for 20 minutes he'll <laughs> talk to you a lot but in the first 20 minutes he will mm. it's got to figure you out that's right he'll just be very <laughs> reserved and all by himself and so um I have found that I might come in and help him introduce himself by giving him the words to say or even saying them for him mm -hmm. just so he can see what the interaction would look like and we just yeah. wait for him to feel comfortable. We're not going to force him along and I would do the same for my clients. We don't force the clients to come in and do certain behaviors before they're allowed to progress in a game. Mm. We'll just model it for them. We'll show them what they could do and give them that opportunity if they're feeling up to it. And if not, that's okay. Can try again another time. So yeah, yeah. I think a lot of it is modeling. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I like that tip of taking that first step for them sometimes. And yeah. Yeah. Sort of the icebreaker of the yes. situation. Yeah. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. Have yep. you got any sort of stories from Atticus at home and how he's been developing his social <laughs> skills? <laughs> yeah, I think it's very interesting. Um, and this is why I really like like play groups and music groups as well. It's really interesting to watch him with kids that are slightly older. Mm -hmm. And it's always lovely because the older kids, they just know so early on, they know that oh, there's a little one that I need to help look after. Oh, and yeah. so it's lovely when the older kids, you know, like the five-year-olds come mm. along and they help him play as mm. well. And so he can learn a lot of social skills from them. And then in turn, he's got two younger cousins who are both about a year younger than him. Okay. And same thing, he will give them the toys so that they can play. Um, 
and that also helps them understand as well well what can other people what do other people know mm. um, you know that's an important part of social skills we call it theory of mind knowing what another person knows mm. and so our little ones need that exposure to other people so they can start developing that so he's still figuring out that while he can give his younger cousins a block and maybe they can build a puzzle to get or build a tower together um, the, his younger cousins aren't going to wait to knock it over, you know, because they just, they don't know that at, that will make Atticus sad, you know? So these are the sorts of things that he's learning by those interactions. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's really <laughs> special to watch that. It is. Yeah. 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 And so for parents out there who, um, maybe have a little one at home and they're not sure, um, they notice that their kid is maybe struggling with some of these social skills, but they're mm. not sure what sort of next steps they can take. What would yep. your advice be? Yeah, absolutely. We didn't actually talk about games before. I mostly talked about places you can go, but a good idea for games in general that promote social skills is games that you can do with your child on the floor um, that don't have batteries and screens, really. Um, so things like blocks, things like food uh, or play food, um, things like Play-Doh, things like uh, bubbles, um, where you can do some back and forth interactions. Um, mm. You can talk together. You can work on something together. Um, play food's great because you can do some role play. Mm. Um, yes. Yeah, all of those games are really good for promoting social skills. So if you've been doing lots of games with your toddler or your child and you're still concerned that their social skills are not developing the way that you had hoped or their peers might be seeming a bit different, um, then probably the first place to talk to is your GP. They have a really good sense of um, the averages and the norms for different child development um, and they can help you out. Um, you can directly refer yourself to a speech pathologist if you're concerned about social skills as well. Mm. Yeah, great. Well, thank you for sharing those tips and no for being on the podcast today. It was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. This podcast is hosted by Hosanna Haddon featuring Rebecca Fenningworth. If you're looking for some more information, you can head to our website at nsp.com.au or head to our YouTube channel to catch up on previous episodes. Thanks for listening. We hope you have a great week.